Uh, in Bangladesh, actually, the Daily Star, for instance, says that the rescue uh, is a race against time. Uh, and you can see that death toll has changed, actually, since this article was published. But there's that striking photo of the foot of one of uh, the victims. And uh, the article points out that that victim, like M many others was probably afraid of actually going to work in this building after cracks had appeared on Tuesday. Uh, and another paper, The Independent, another paper from uh, Bangladesh, says that it's disconcerting that the owners of the, the buildings and, the and in fact, the, the owners of the factories, the garment factories that were located in the buildings, uh, it was dis disconcerting that they decided to keep their operations running after these cracks appeared on Tuesday. Um, the Independent says that uh, while the owners of the building should really receive exemplary uh, punishment for violating building codes, and it says how much long longer will the nation keep on looking at the funeral procession of the dead who fall prey not to the law of nature but to blatant human greed and the failure of institutions. And in fact, the Wall Street Journal today points out that this is not the first time that there's been such an industrial tragedy in Bangladesh and in, in Asia as in general. For instance, this uh, article here points out that back in November, 110 workers died at a fire at another garment factory uh, in Dhaka. And uh, well, the Wall Street Journal points out that Bangladesh uh, has one of the largest garment industries in the world. It provides uh, cheap clothing for lots of major Western retailers because of its low uh, cost of labor. Now, it's unclear just which Western retailers were making uh, garments in this factory. In fact, a lot of them haven't have released statements saying they were not uh, they were trying to distance themselves from this disaster. Mm, OK, let's move on to uh, Italy now. Uh, a new prime minister there, not always the longest lived of uh, posts. That's right. Enrico Letta uh, in the La Stampa points out that he was surprised, actually, uh, to be nominated and felt the profound responsibility on his shoulders. Now, he's seen as a potential ticket out of the political crisis that's paralyzed Italy for the last two months. Uh, he says he's going to quickly form a government with just about 18 uh, ministers, says La Stampa, though he did say that this government will not be born at all costs uh, uh, if it will only be born if the conditions are met. Um, so who is this guy? A lot of uh, pr the press is trying to figure out who he is. Uh, the Financial Times has a portrait of him, 46 years old, uh, pro-European. Uh, he comes from the moderate Catholic wing of the center-left Democrats. So the Financial Times says that he's a party loyalist who uh, is seen as perhaps the bridge uh, to Silvio Berlusconi and the center-right. OK, next up, The Guardian reporting on a landmark scientific uh, discovery 60 years ago. That's right. 60 years ago today, uh, Francis Crick and James Watson published the structure of DNA. Uh, and that is, of course, the twisted ladder of the double helix. I remember that from <laughs> biology. Now, this, uh, according to The Guardian, March, marked an incredible turning point, the beginning of an industrial revolution, a golden age, our our understanding of life was changed forever, and in fact, it's become so much part of our culture. Uh, the authorities use it for crime scenes, etc. Uh, and according to this article, despite all the moral questions and lawsuits that have come up around DNA, it's important and it's our responsibility to let DNA technology flourish. Uh, another little article in The Guardian uh, takes a closer look at a woman, actually, who played a crucial role in discovering DNA. Her name is uh, was Rosalind Franklin. And it was her skills in something called X-ray crystallography uh, that tipped off Crick and Watson. But she didn't get any of the credit. So uh, The Guardian wonders, was this a case of uh, science and sexism? Well, she died before they received their uh, Nobel Prize in 1962. And The Guardian wonders, would she have been a laureate if she was still alive? Let's finish up on the deeply unsexist world of uh, football. Uh, in the last World Cup in South Africa, it was the Vuvuzuela which made the noise. And there's going to be a change in Brazil. That's right. It's called the Cachirola. And I, I think we can pull up some images where you can get a, a, a hear a listen of, of what it actually sounds like. Uh, the man you'll see in the video is a Brazilian musician. Here you hear it. So that's the cashew roller. That man is uh, Carlinhos Brown. He's a famous a musician in Brazil. He designed it specifically for this World Cup. Uh, but remember, the Vuvuzela was banned because it made too much noise. <laughs> I wonder how long this Not will last in the stadium. Which could be leveled at this, it would seem. Florence Flemino, thank you very much for that review of the international press. Do stay with us. Coming up very shortly, business selling France. President Francois Hollande's in China as he tries to build trade for French companies.